bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul, I love you. I really do. My soul can't speak for anybody else. My soul says yes. Now, not my will, mm, right there, but thy will be done. It's no more I, but it's you, Christ, that lives inside. Lord, mm, I give my everything my everything to you. And I yield it completely through and through. My soul says yes. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I focus on this morning. Not I, but Christ. The question is, who's living on the inside of you? <clears throat> and do you recognize his presence? And is he in charge? The Apostle Paul speaks. <coughs> And it's recorded in Galatians 2, 20 and 21. And I'm reading from the New Living Testament. The Apostle Paul says, my old self has been crucified with Christ. Therefore, it is no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. For if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. <sighs> Allow me to repeat that, and I may edit along the way. The Apostle Paul speaks. Uh, you have to know Paul to appreciate his writing. Our pastor who's in heaven now, he capitalized on the life of Paul. The Apostle Paul speaks. My old self, meaning my old nature, has been crucified with Christ. Therefore, it is no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He meaning Christ. Christ died for me and was resurrected in me. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless, meaning I'm not unappreciative. For if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. Oh, how Christ loves you and me. He took our punishment. Not I, but Christ. We as believers, meaning saved human beings, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, we have no bragging rights. No bragging rights. No inherent merit or value born out of our own nature. That's 
the seed of Adam, we were all still born. Meaning we were born physically and mentally alive, but spiritually dead. Meaning spiritually cut off from the nature of the spirit God, and therefore sentenced by God to eternal separation from the spirit of God with a flawed nature. Our nature was flawed. We were therefore classified by our human nature as sinners, not just by what we think and do, but by our inherent nature, which was the disobedient nature of the first Adam. I inherited the nature of the first Adam, who was disobedient. And his seed inherited his disobedience. We are naturally the recipients of the nature of the first Adam. We needed a savior. In the beginning, God called out to Adam and said, Adam, where are you? Adam, Adam, wh where are you? Adam replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked meaning my sin nature was exposed. I was naked. So God said, who told you that you were naked? In other words, innocence is not embarrassed by nakedness. So what is it that has caused you to become self-conscious? You've always been naked. What's unusual about your nakedness? You've always been naked and unashamed in my presence. God then asked the critical question, have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from. Hmm. Self-consciousness. Self-consciousness causes mankind to see itself as detached, separate, and independent from God. I repeat, self-consciousness causes mankind to see himself as detached, separate, and independent from God. Note that Jesus, the perfect God-man, declared that I and my Father are one. Hmm. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Now, as Christians, when the world sees us, the church, the body of Christ, they are to see the Christ in us. Thus, we are called Christians. Christians after Christ. Not I, but In other words, to God be all the glory. I have no personal bragging rights. Unless he's there, I'm nothing. And I have no bragging rights. But then I invite him in. 
it is now no longer I. But it's the Christ who has taken up residence in me. Jesus, the God-man, is our only way back to the garden and back to the presence of the Father. Jesus declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And here's the bottom line that we must get straight. No man, that means no woman, no man, no woman comes to the Father except through me. This means that Jesus is the door and the only entrance to the Holy of Holies. We can't get there on our own. We do God no favor to show up and worship. He's worthy of worship. He's God all by himself, and he is the way. He's the only way. As the seed of Adam, all mankind were born already sentenced under the law. The law condemned us. The law was given and we discovered that we could not follow the law. Not all of the law. And the wages of the sin of the first Adam, which all mankind inherited at birth, is death. But, be grateful for the but, in the fullness of time, Christ died in our place. He didn't just die. He didn't die because of something in him. He didn't die because the world was upset with him. He died because he came to die in my place. Now, I'm not talking about just physically dying. Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, perfect, died in our place as the perfect Lamb, the second Adam, who took away the sins of the world in order to provide a way back to the presence of the Father. Jesus said, I am the way. There's no other way. Jesus said, I am. I am is God also. I am the way. I am the truth. There is no truth apart from Jesus. And I am the life. Now let me be clear. Jesus says, no man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus is the door. Don't let death catch up with you before you go through the door. And there's only one door. Jesus is the door. For scripture records, for God, the Trinitarian God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. For God so loved the world, not meaning this physical world, but meaning all mankind. God so loved the world that God put on flesh in the person of the Son so that whosoever believes in the Son will not perish. You take off mortality, but you don't stop being. <clears throat> but you will be gifted. You can't work for this. 
you will be gifted with everlasting life. I mean you live forever. You'll never die. People will die and will cry at your funeral, but you're not dead. You just vacated your body. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world, meaning you and I, through the son might be saved. So I stand here this morning and declare it's not I, but Christ. Not I. Don't put too much emphasis on who your pastor is. It's not about me. I'm on assignment. But it's not about me. I want you to love me, but don't fall in love with me that you forget who I am. I'm a servant of the Most High God. And I've been commissioned to teach, preach, walk, exude, show forth the walk that I teach you by. Not for purposes of entertaining you, but so that you will also learn to walk and be. It's not I. Doesn't matter whether you like me or not. Everybody didn't like Jesus. But he was and is the Son of the Most High God. We have no bragging rights. None of us. None. From the pulpit to the door. None of us have any bragging rights. We only have gratitude. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving me enough to take my punishment, die in my place, and then give me the keys to the kingdom. So what's the lesson? Aren't you glad I'm not a long-winded preacher? The believer, emphasis on believer, not all people, but the believer, not even so-called good people, but the one who receives by faith the gift of God meaning the perfect lamb of God who loved us and took the penalty of death executed by the Father as payment for all judgment against sin. All right. If I went fast, I'm gonna slow it down. This is the lesson. The believer, emphasis believer. Not all people, that's not what I mean by believer. Not even all so-called good people. But the ones who receives by faith. By faith, you take God in his word. The gift of God, meaning the perfect lamb of God, who loved us and took the penalty of death, executed by the Father, somebody had to die. But the somebody had to be perfect. If you're that person, please raise your hand this morning so we can know who you are. For God so loved the world that he sacrificed. He didn't just give. He sacrificed. Somebody asked me to give up Alethea. For God so loved the world that he sacrificed in our place his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, as the perfect lamb of God.
so that whosoever, no exceptions, whosoever would place their faith in the Son of God would be gifted with eternal life and a home in the kingdom of God. We're just passing through. This is not our home. We're passing through. Oh, how he loves you and me. When he put on flesh and gave his human life for mankind, what more could he give? He loves us so much. Hear me. He loves us so much that he has gone away to prepare a place for us. Now here are the conditions. That while, that where he is, which means the third heaven, there will be also a place for us. And we shall behold him face to face in all of his glory. Now, I don't know what Jesus was like as a man, but that wasn't all of his glory. But we're going to get an opportunity to meet him face to face and see him as he really is. You're gonna respect him a lot more when you see who he really is. We remember the Jesus that put on flesh. But Jesus is God. He's God in the second person. And we shall behold him. Oh my goodness. I'm not anxious to die, but I really want to see him. I want to behold him face to face in all of his glory. Now, we do not know what we shall be like. I won't be like this. That's all that I know. But we know that we shall be like him. In other words, we shall become glorified sons and daughters of the Most High God. Take a deep breath. Whatever you think about yourself now, oh, you gotta get past that. There's a promise of something so glorious you cannot even imagine. I can only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes would see when your face is before I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in awe of you, just be still? Will I stand in your presence? And to my knees, will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Or will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine when that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. You can't take this couple of hours here in worship. What are you going to do when you get to heaven and that's all that they do? 
they worship. I can only imagine. How many of you already looked at your watch? Surrounded by your glory. Mm. What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in awe of you, just be still? Will I stand in your presence or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in awe of you? In such awe that I just can't move. Will I stand in your presence? Oh, to my knees, will I? Can you imagine you in front of Jesus? What you gonna do? Will I sing hallelujah? Or will I be able to speak at all? Dumbfounded. I can only imagine. That's all I have for you today. Oh, I can only imagine. I have so many people who've crossed over and I miss them. My mama, my daddy, my sisters, my brother, my son, <laughs> my husband. I really want to see them again. And I know I will. That's the only way I stay on my feet. I want to hear him say, well done. Yeah. Even when it hurt, you were committed. Not to what you decided to do. Friendship, I didn't decide any of this. He called me. And regardless of how you feel about it, one does not say no to Christ, to God the Father. I'm yours, Lord. I don't know what all of this is about, but I know that it is preparation to behold you face to face. And I don't want to and I don't intend to disappoint you. Help me, Holy Ghost. So it's not me, but it's you. I, I open myself up, come on in and live and do what you do. I surrender. Not some of me, but all of me. I can only imagine. I think I can make it to the end. Thank you. God loves you and offers a wonderful, a wonderful plan for your life. For John 3.16 records, for God so loved the world that he, meaning God, gave his only begotten son, meaning Jesus the Christ, that whosoever, I don't care what you've done, the door is open to you. Today can be the first day of the rest of your life. Ooh, you can become royalty. Whosoever believes in him, meaning believe in God the Son, should not perish 
but have eternal life. You will live forever. You'll take off this body, but you will live forever. Now, man in and of himself is sinful and separated from God. Therefore, the bottom line is, he cannot know and experience God's love, number one, and plan for his life. I know people ask you when you're little, what do you want to do when you grow up? But the correct question would be, what has God called you to do? Not when you grow up physically, but when you grow up spiritually. For all have sinned, all, from the preacher to the door. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's found in Romans 3 and 23. Now man was created by God to have fellowship with God. But because of his stubborn self-will, he chose. And you can choose. Because God did not want to make you. He gave you the right to make up your mind and choose. Man chose to go his own independent way. And fellowship with God was broken. Now this self-will is characterized by an attitude of active rebellion or passive indifference. And it is evidence of what the Bible calls sin. And there is only one way, one way, you can't work for this, one way to bridge the gulf between God and man. Hear me clearly. Jesus Christ is God's only, I repeat, only. Don't go to God and show him all your good works. Jesus Christ is God's only provision for man's sin. It is through him that you can both know, and here's the good part, and experience God's love and plan for your life. I've had some good times, I've had some bad times, I've had some painful times, but this one thing I know, God loves me. He loves me right now. And the love is just so amazing that I can't imagine how does he find worth in a human being. Amazing. But God, oh my God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, we, we weren't something wonderful to have. Think back on your life. Go ahead, I'll give you a minute. Think back. <laughs> while we were yet sinners, Christ just went ahead and died for us. He took my punishment. He, he raised his hand. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Now Christ died for our sins and then he was buried, but he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. As proof, he appeared to Peter, then he appeared to the 12, meaning the 12 disciples, and after that, he appeared to more than 500, alive and well. They had crucified him, put him in the tomb. But he woke up. But not only did he wake up, he got up. And then he walked out. And he showed himself as proof, because he knew that this age of Christians needed proof. Show me. Jesus said to him, meaning to Peter, I am 
the way and the truth and the life. And no one, I mean no one, not the preacher, not the teacher, deacons, not the teachers, not anybody. No one comes to the Father but through me. Now, this is my position. But you have a position too. I mean, this is nothing to envy. I did not ask for it. I was assigned. And you can't sit there and judge me and not think about your ministry. What? <laughs> Help me, Jesus. Don't let Mary Ann come out. <laughs> We must individually receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, both. Then, it's then, then we can know and experience God's love and plan for our lives. You're sitting in the congregation, but you're not sitting there to be entertained. You're sitting there to be taught so that you will imbibe, become, and then go and show forth so that somebody will see you and ask not the preacher, but you, the critical question. What must I do to be saved? And if I don't get my job done right, and the Sunday school teachers don't get their job right, pastor's already done his part. He said, I told him. Hmm. But as many as received him, meaning the Christ, to them he gave the right to become children of God, not adopted, children even to those who believe in his name. John 1 and 12. For by grace, it's unmerited favor. There was nothing you did to deserve it. Nothing that I did to deserve it. It's by grace. Grace is unmerited favor. You have been saved through faith. You believe God. And it's not like you just intellectually believe God, but you believe God here in your heart to the point that you'll act on it. It's gotta be more than an intellectual knowledge. It has to be a heart knowledge. And after it hits your heart, you gotta be willing to do it and be it. Hmm. I get eyeballs staring straight. It's not of yourselves. You could have been a real nice person. I never went to jail. I never did anything terrible that people wanted to bring me before the church. But it's not about you. It's not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. And it's not a result of your works. You ought to work. But if you can't work for a while, it's not about your works. And even when you get it right and you do your work in right, it's still inefficient without the Holy Ghost. And that's so no one can boast. I can't boast. You can't boast. You don't like me. I don't like you. It does not matter. For God so loved the world. When we receive Christ, we experience a new birth called being born again. 